vector coordinates as linear map. Uh, the concept itself, we have discussed it already maybe two or three weeks ago, and you spent some time already on these concepts in your tutorial classes. So he, here's what's happening. On this slide, again, I will have a vector space, canonical triple, oh, sorry, quadruple, like this. And in this vector space, I will fix a basis, B, like this, with M elements. That's my setting in this slide. Within such a setting, on Thursday, on Thursday, there was an example of a linear map when we discussed with you the concept of an image of a linear map. We discussed with you that if I introduce a mapping like this, uh, I didn't use the symbol on that on Thursday. I used a symbol T, like a general symbol T for a linear map, but this time I'm using this particular J sub B symbol. So it's a map which what it does, it takes the M tuple of scalars and returns the linear combination of the basis vectors. So it's a map which takes F, M to V. On Thursday, on Thursday, we proved with you that this is a linear map. It was a detailed proof of that, so we proved this early on. on, on exactly, we proved this on Thursday. And this is a linear map. So we, if we take the M tuples into vectors via this particular definition. Uh, we use this map when, when we discuss with you the concept of, a, of an image of a linear map, and I, pr I showed you on Thursday that the image of this particular linear map, it covers the whole class, the second class of type of subspaces we discussed with you when we discussed subspaces. Right now, what I'm going to present, I'm going to present another map which goes in conjunction with this all the time. And I will call this map... Mm, I'm going to do it like this. If I now take, if I go the, now in the converse, in, in the opposite direction, if I take a vector from my vector space, right? Because B is a basis, because B is a basis, we all know one of the principal properties of the basis is that we will always be able to represent this vector as a linear combination of elements of the basis, right? We all know that. So you see, this here, I started with the n tuple of scalars and returned the vector. Now I start with a vector and with this vector, I can associate the scalars because B is a basis. And these scalars, we gave them a name, quite distinct name. We call them coordinates of the vector X with respect to the given basis. And that was a symbol we used for that. Here it is from FM. Now I'm gonna formalize this correspondence. I'm, this correspondence, which takes a vector and associates for the vector, associates with the vector an M tuple of scalars, that's the correspondence. It is a mapping. We took a vector and we return an M tuple. I'm going to give a name to this mapping. I'm going to call it I sub B. That's the mapping which takes a vector and returns the M tuples of associate, co associate coordinates. Every time, of course, both of these mappings, they depend on the basis. That's why I reflect this dependence with this sub B here. What I claim, I claim two things. I claim that my new mapping, I sub B, is in fact the inverse of JB mapping. So every time an M tuple is taken to a vector via JB, the IB will take back this vector to the same M tuple. Quite an obvious observation. So IB is the inverse mapping, or you can put it like this. The IB is the inverse of the JB. That's the first observation, which is quite a trivial observation. It's right here on, your, on the slide, right in front of you. And the second observation which I claim is that this new mapping IB, and that will be my lemma, is a linear map. And that's the purpose of this slide, to discuss with you why this is a linear map. So these two maps, I will genuinely, I will collectively call them the vector coordinates linear maps. One of them is the forward map, the other one is the inverse map. And they they appear very often in many discussions. And actually, some of the some of the slides we're going to have later on today, they will rely on the on this on this lemma in particular. Let's just let's just argue that. So here's my proof for that. Again, I have to check two properties of a linear map. For those two properties, because they they the argument goes. 
go like a, in a similar lines, I will fix annotation. So I'll fix two vectors from my vector space. For each of those vectors, I can, in, in the same way we did it here, I can associate coordinates. Here we go. For x, I will use the letter, I will use the symbols x1, xm. And for y, I will use the letters y1, ym. If you follow, it's, just, it's a side comment actually, if you follow my presentations, I mean, quite closely, you see sometimes when I, didn't, like when I give n tuples or m tuples or sequences of objects, Sometimes I list the first two, then the dots and the last one. Sometimes I list the first only, then the dots and the last one. Here's the example, here, you see? First two, dots and the last one. Here only the first, dots and the last one. This is an acceptable practice when you want to save some time and space, given that the context clearly indicates the, the general pattern in which this sequence appears. Well, here, obviously, well, the, the pattern is quite, quite clear, especially because I listed it in the more extended version, more extended form here. That's why for the proof, I'm gonna use the shorter version with only the first one, and I'm sure that will not cause any confusion. It's, it's acceptable practice of presentation, and you, I encourage you to employ that practice when you make your own presentations. Anyway, uh, if I want to see that this is a linear map, I have to check two properties of a linear map. Let me just lift this. I will just take this up a little bit. That's all I need to, to for, for, for the presentation. The relation between x and this m top, oh, and the relation, I realize there's a typo here. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be m here. The relation between this x and this m topple and between this y and this m topple, here they are, just they are connected via this linear combination thing. X is a linear combination of my x1, x2, xm, scalars, and the basis and y is a linear combination of the same basis with the coefficients y1, y2, and ym. Right, so here's what I'm going to say. For If I want to check the property A of a linear map for this particular map, that's what I'm going to say. If I take the sum of two vectors, x plus y, which means I have to add right-hand side here and the right-hand side here with a little with a little rearrangement and this little rearrangement I hide behind these dots you can combine all of the a1 vectors together all of the a2 vectors together all of the am vectors together and that will make the expression of this type x1 plus y1 will be a joint coefficient in front of a1 vector x2 plus y2 will be a joint coefficient in front of the a2 vector xm plus ym will be a joint coefficient in front of am vector. Meaning that, meaning that, that if you add two vectors, and if you go after coordinates of two vectors, that will be the individual sum of the components here. So what I'm saying is this, if I now apply my i sub b map to a sum of two vectors, which by definition is the coordinates of these two vectors with respect to the basis B. This line suggests that the coordinates are x1 plus y1 and the last one xm plus ym. That's what this line suggests. Operations on operations on m tuples, we, uh, the linear operations on m tuples suggest that this one m tuple is the sum of these two individual m tuples. And these two objects individually, they just i sub b of x and i sub b of y. And here's my verification of the first property of a linear map for the i sub b map. Here's my verification of the property B. It's again relatively routine, but you have to put things in the right places and say the right words in the right places. Here we go. I make the observation that if I scale a vector, if I use this part, if I scale a vector x, again with a little arithmetic, you can rearrange things like this. You can scale individual coefficients here, like this. And so now, 
if I apply my IB map to the scale vector x, to the lambda x, by definition, this is simply the coordinates of lambda x with respect to b. It's a definition of the I sub b map. This line shows that the coordinates are these numbers in front of my A basis. Here they are. On the other way, on the other hand, the way we scale M tuples suggests that this one is simply lambda times this individual M tuple, which is in basically IB of X. And that's my that's the finish of my verification of B property for the I sub B map.